Another question. Um, yeah. What are your thoughts uh, about protein powders? Um, I'm very careful about ingredients and I, I try to avoid them, but uh, uh, even plant-based protein powders, what are your thoughts on them? Yeah, there's no real need for, there's rare uses for them. Uh, I'm very concerned. Um, uh, from what I read, there's been a couple of studies to the contrary, but by and large, high protein diets are, are toxic to the kidneys. Uh, when, when you blast a, a whole bunch of amino acids into the kidneys, you know, again, we're the human body, we're used to getting our amino acids bound up in plant fiber, you know, in the fiber of the beans and, and the lentils. And, and it takes hours for those proteins to get digested and the amount of protein rises very gradually in the blood, doesn't exert much of an effect. But boy, you put 100 grams of protein powder, you know, two, three tablespoons of that stuff into a smoothie and bolt it down, uh, suddenly, boom, uh, all those amino acids slam into the kidney filters. And there's a uh, study showing that, that that makes the kidney shift into a gear called hyperfiltration, and it's stressful on the kidneys. Um, when, the, when the kidney doctors and the nephrologists have someone going into kidney failure, the first thing they do is put them on the low protein diet because high protein diets are, are toxic to the kidneys. So protein, 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 we're all, you know, where are you gonna get your protein, you vegans? Uh, the truth is there's protein in all plant foods. And these concentrated proteins, I'm, I'm concerned about in these powders uh, because of the effect on the kidneys, and also, um, your liver, uh, you blast with a bunch of amino acids, it's going to respond with a, um, with a gush of this hormone called insulin-like growth factor 1, IGF-1, uh, which makes the body build tissue, which is great if you're a young, growing boy or girl. But if you're an adult, well, a guy with a big prostate or a prostate cancer, the last thing you want is your liver putting out a bunch of IGF-1 that stimulates growth. If you're a woman with a breast lump, that's the last thing you want to be doing is, is putting out lots of IGF-1. Um, more is not better here when it comes to right. protein. So get your protein out of whole plant foods. Uh, and if you're eating enough calories, if you're eating your 2,000 calories to keep your weight on, uh, out of whole plant foods, whole grains, beans, the fruits, vegetables, you are guaranteed of getting 50, 60, 70 grams of high grade protein. It, it's in the plants, it's in the greens, it's in the beans, it's in the nuts and seeds. Yes. Uh, you can't miss, it's not an issue. In 47 years of practice, I've never written the diagnosis protein deficiency on, <laughs> right. on a chart. It, <laughs> right. uh, that, that's not the, the issue. But protein excess, I get concerned. I think a lot of these cancers are driven by protein excess. I think so. Kidney failure is driven by it, uh, and we we just don't need these protein powders. That said, there are some medical conditions, people with muscle wasting diseases, etc. There may be a use for them, and uh, even the bodybuilders, even uh, Robert Cheek and some of the vegan bodybuilders are back. They used to do lots of these protein. Powders. Yeah, I think you moved away from it. They're, yeah, they're starting to move away from it because again, this is not sugar candy here. This is uh, well, that's bad enough as it is, sugar candy. But these protein powders uh, are, are, are can be problematic. So I'm not a big fan of them by and large. Right. I'd rather you have another scoop of lentil stew or another bean burrito. Uh, rather than using uh, protein powders. Yeah, because you see so many ads, um, you know, everywhere. Protein this, this is protein rich, and it just you know, drives me crazy. We have plenty yeah. of protein. You know, yeah. all the, the food's full of it. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah.